My name is Cat Popper. I'm a musician. I really like people and I love to hear stories. Three things you should know about my friend Ed. Number one, he's a trombonist, which in my mind as a string player is a near criminal act. Number two, Ed is going to die on May 31st, 2024. And number three, Ed will pepper every conversation you have with him with the worst goddamn jokes and puns you've ever heard. I met Ed in a 12-step fellowship that meets almost exclusively on Zoom. Hi, Ed. Hey, Kat. Thank you for um, coming and hanging out with me today. I know that we spend a lot of time like doing this uh, hanging out on Zoom with other folks and um, you came in new to a meeting, uh, a 12-step uh, meeting that I'm a part of and uh, everybody fell in love with you. Well, I'll tell you, I, I fell in love with all of you as well. Um, just a uh, feeling of home and safety and identification and understanding I could, I could, I could be me. And I, just loved other people being themselves. Uh, just, yeah, the support is incredible. He was really quiet at first, but then slowly started to open up to us and then very gradually let us in to an important and at that time private decision he had made. Because of a lifetime or 40 years of pain, of daily chronic seven out of 10 level pain, I've, I've decided that uh, I'm going to end my life. I'm going to end my suffering. I have tried everything I can think of, and I I have not been able to solve it. Um, I know people who've had pain for maybe a week or, you know, a day or a few weeks even. Uh, but how many people do we know that have long-term chronic pain? And I know they're they're all over the place, but it's certainly not the majority of the population. But and no one has a sign on their head that says I'm in chronic pain. There's a program in Canada called MADE, Medical Assistance in Dying. And uh, I, I have a date. I've known this date since December. The date is May 31st, 2024. Knowing your date is, is some, um, that's a, that's not a, that's not necessarily a, a very human experience, right? That most people share. It's a, it's strange to have a death date, you know, and that's, that's, that's the latest date. I mean, I could have a heart attack five minutes from now. <laughs> like, and so could any of us, right? Uh, like the, yeah, we're not getting out of this alive. Sometimes I'm peaceful, but at the same time, I'm really, really grief stricken. That's it sounds like they, they couldn't coexist, but but they do. I'm starting to really see what's infinite and what's finite. Time is precious, but time was always precious. Most people who know you and care about you think, wow, I hope he changes his mind. Does that feel, do you feel that emanating from people and does it bother you? I do, yes. And no, it doesn't bother me. I understand it's a, it's a there's a lot of emotion around it. Uh, some people get angry about it. Uh, some people get very scared and awkward and um, the word selfish comes up and I understand, you know, and my, my intent, my, my impulse is to defend, you know, defend myself and but I'm not being attacked. Some of your friends were like, what, what do we do with our sadness? So he feels supported. And I know you mentioned your kids. That's the hardest part is my, my girls, you know, uh, having those two conversations with, with my girls. Um, this, this is not, this is not fair to them. I've thought about this over and over again. And I, I revisit it. A lot even now the 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 instinct to live is uh, extremely strong and every time i revisit it i come to the same decision ed spent years playing trombone professionally and sustained a debilitating repetitive stress injury which is something that is all too familiar for many of us musicians i was in a practice room uh when i was 20 in 1984 I just remember the feeling. It was like a jolt of electricity from my wrist to my neck and back. And I, I played trombone, so 17 pounds of brass held in my left arm, sometimes 10 or 12 hours a day, sometimes seven days a week. And uh, the body just isn't made to, to do that. This is not an ergonomic instrument. It's not a very polite instrument, if you don't mind me. No, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I 
just oh i i love playing loud to to drive the motif home and yeah. to make sure that anybody in the back row who was sleeping it, uh manages to wake up yeah they're not sleeping anymore <laughs> i i woke up and i was thinking about this i was like why is it that trombone players are either like virginal or just disgusting sex perverts i resemble that remark i, I am <laughs> virgin oh i love music and I, I just loved, I still do. What's a couple of your favorite pieces? Wow, this is, this is Mahler's Fifth Symphony, um, Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony, Mozart, all the Mozart Requiem I got to play twice. For those that saw Amadeus, you know, he wrote that on his deathbed. And uh, the very end of it is an open fifth. Now, for those who don't know what an open fifth is, you know, a major key is, you know, it feels happy. A minor key feels kind of sad. And he ends it with the open fifth, so it's it's neither. Well, in the dress rehearsal, I mean, we're always up to stuff in the trombone section. I in the dress rehearsal, I threw in a major third as softly as I could at the end, and and the, the conductor just about soiled himself, and uh, like and, and he just he's, he's who who played the major third? Who played the major third? I went to a performing arts high school, and they put me in a in a Sousa ensemble so it was upright bass and brass and i've never felt so useless in my life nobody knew oh. if i was playing it was just oh. Oh. just yeah. fucking noise and spit and me just why am i here <laughs> when ed isn't spending precious time with his kids he's been planning and realizing some sort of manageable bucket list items you said i wish i had been living my life this way all along. I haven't been a risk taker in my life for the most part. I've played it safe a lot and I I, uh, I wish that didn't happen, but it, I've become more and more bold in the last year, I'll tell you. I, I went to New York City last June and that was a major bucket list items in that. You know, I'm, I'm about to travel for the next uh, month and a half in three, uh, three different areas of the continent. And, um, you know, with, with my pain and my energy levels, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. You know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, if I had a, if I knew when I was going to go, I would snort heroin until I shat out my nose or, <laughs> you know, or I would go to Paris. The, the choices that you've made and that you're excited about, do you question, like, is that the right thing to do? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I do. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. You're looking oh. forward to what? The meeting of a few really cool people that I've just seen on Zoom, you know, big hugs, big hugs coming all around. Like the the most important thing for you is one of the, something you really value is people and meeting people. There's been so much love. Yeah, gratitude's just so huge, and not just not just gratitude, you know, for the you know feeling grateful, but expressing the gratitude through through service. Like if I don't express the gratitude, it's just stagnant. It's of no value. Would you say you don't fear death? For the most part, you know, I, 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 uh, I feel, I feel like there's just pure love at the other side of this, and all, uh, all resentments will be gone, and all insecurities and petty, petty things will all be gone. Do you feel like people will have a different connection with you, maybe who you have trouble with? I do. There's, um, see, part of the process, you know, is, is the amends process in the 12 step recovery. And I've, I've made, um, for the ones that I can't approach, those one or two, I'll leave a video. Um, and, uh, I, but I understand like any harm, any harm in this world is just, it's just woundedness. It's just, it's it's woundedness that that hasn't been properly healed, you know. So people are innately good, I believe. I don't know. Thank you for opening up about it. This has been very cathartic, and 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 you're the ideal ideal person to do it with. So this, is, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Well, I'm I love you, and I um. Like I said, uh, we're here for you, and then later we'll um, talk about our real feelings, because they might just be none of your fucking business. <laughs>